I'm going to teach you how to become modern-day Nostradamuses, okay, where you can go and read a forex chart with a fair amount of certainty, with 80 to 90% accuracy, okay, of what is going to happen in the next day, hour, 30 minutes, and five minutes, okay, if you, if you listen to my strategies, okay? There is very seldom, I ask my clients, very seldom, okay, that I'm wrong. When I post my pictures on, the, on my group and I'm mentoring, it is very seldom that I get it wrong, okay? But it's an 80 to 90% accuracy. Am I correct? Okay? If you learn this and you take the time to learn the skill, you see, when you're trading, you have to have money rules. That's the first thing, okay? You don't just put your money down and you say, please, God, go up. You see, a lot of you losing money is for two reasons. You get out of the trade too quickly, so you don't maximize the profit. And then you get out too late when you're losing money, so you let your, your profits run wild, and you cut your, your profits too short, and you lose money. So yeah, you need to trust, and you have to have money rules, and you need to go into this with eyes wide open, and you need to say, how much am I prepared to lose on the trade? You must always go into a trade saying, how much am I prepared to lose? Not how much am I prepared to win. Wrong attitude. You go in and you say, how much am I prepared to lose? And normally, when you trade shares, how much are you norm normally prepared to lose when you're trading shares? Anybody? 10%. Rule of thumb. 10%, you're out the market. Most investment oaks will tell you this. Now, here's my disclaimer. I'm not giving signals. I'm not telling you to invest or take a trade. That's not what I'm here for. I'm here to teach you how to read a Forex chart. I am not FSB approved, okay? I'm, because I'm not giving you trading advice. I'm not telling you to enter a trade or to get out of a trade. If you do that on your own, you do it on your own. It's got nothing to do with me. I'm only here to teach you how to read a forex chart with a fair amount of certainty, and this is going to take time. Now, I was taught how to do this. This is just not a magical skill that I was born with. I was taught how to do this, and I learn on steroids at 10 times the speed of everybody else. I don't know why, okay? But I learn fast, mainly because I've lost 18 million rand, okay? When you lose that sort of money, you learn fast, Okay, because I'm sick and tired of losing money. Who's sick and tired of losing money? Okay, sick and tired. And I'm not only am I sick and tired of me losing money, but I'm sick and tired of giving my money to someone else and they lose my flipping money. Okay, that's, that's already like crazy. This is how you set up your chart. This is an, a stochastic oscillator. This is one of the major tools that you're going to be using. Stochastic oscillator, period, 1233. Colors, red and yellow. You'll set it up on your phones later, okay? You can download my slides, so you don't have to worry, okay? So let me go back. Right, let's start. Right, so this is what the chart looks like. L, it's scary, man. Yes, us. Don't know what's going on. Don't know what's cutting. Lots of lines. This is simple. By the end of today, I promise you, you're going to be ninjas. Ninjas! You're going to know exactly what's going on, okay, and how to read a forex chart, okay? So, I'm going to open my chart here, okay? So, that's basically what your chart's going to look like. There are lots of lines, and it's very confusing for a person that doesn't know what the hell they're looking at, and it's scary. Nothing to be scared of. Forex is fun. So, we use candlestick analysis. Candlestick analysis together with uh, your moving averages and your stochastic uh, indicators are going to give you a huge advantage, okay? All indicators are lagging indicators. It means it works on the history. Works, it works on the past. But if you use candlestick analysis together with stochastics and moving averages, it becomes a predictive indicator with 80% certainty. Now, everybody is using Western analysis. Western analysis is the moving averages, uh, Fibonacci's, and pitchforks, and blah, 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 who cares, okay? I use a strategy that has been used for the last 400 years, created by the Japanese rice traders, the most successful and richest traders in the world. 
It's a 400-year-old strategy, and this is what a candle looks like. So you're going to change your graph on your, on your phone to a candlestick chart, not line chart and not the Western chart with a, with a dash in the dash. It must be a candlestick chart. So this is what a candlestick looks like, okay? So that's the body. This is a bull candle. Bull means price is going up. Bear means price is going down in red. So green, red, okay? So that's the body of the candle. So this is the open price. This is the closed price. So it's filled in green, which means that it's in a profit. This is the wick. These are called wicks or shadows. So in other words, the price opened here, and then the price came down to there. Then it retraced back to here. It went to the high, so that's the high, and then it closed over here. And that's how your candle forms. Are we together? Very simple. There are 15 major Japanese candlestick reversal patterns. But we're going to concentrate on one, which is called a doji. This is the most significant candlestick reversal pattern out of all the candlesticks there are. Okay, A lot of people trade on the hammer. A lot of people trade on the dragonfly. I know the doji because it works with 80 to 90% uh, success rate if you know where to look for it. Okay, This is a doji. The open and the close price are basically the same. And the longer the shadow or the wick, the more predictive it is as an indicator that there is going to be a reversal, okay? So what a lot of people are doing is, and the reason you're failing in Forex is because you're setting your stop loss over there, okay, it, and you're getting whipsawed out of the market too soon. That's what a lot of people are doing, and then you keep losing money on the trade, and you say, I should have stayed in, man. I knew it was going to go up, okay? I shit, it went up. No, man, I now I've lost my money. You only lose money when you close the trade, that's the major signal that you're going to trade off is a doji. Okay, learn it. Know what it is. When you see it, react. Get excited. So a doji at the top of a trend, you take profit at the top of a trend, not in the middle of a trend, at the top of a trend. Okay? When you see it at the top, you can go short. Do you know what going short means? Who does not know what going short means? So you can make profit on the way up and you can make profit on the way down, okay? It's basically you are predicting a future value of a, of a share, okay, or of a currency, okay? We're not really trading currencies. We're trading the futures of currencies, okay? If we were trading currencies, we'd have the currency in our hand, okay? So when it is at the top and you sell, you are saying that uh, the price is going to be X, okay, and you'll make money all the way down, okay? So you make money on the way up, and you make money on the way down. So let's analyze the chart. Where's the doji? Come, come and show me. Show me the doji. That's Wait. that one, the red one. Yeah. The red one or the green one? The, the green one. The green one. No, that's a hammer. That's an inverted hammer, Okay. There's your doji over there, okay? I'm going to show you another one. Let me, let me show you live. Every time you see a doji, you know it's going to reverse. There it is. There is your doji. It's that, that if I shrink it, you'll see the trend. There's your uptrend. Here's your uptrend. Ah, oh, no, man. Here's your uptrend. Blue, 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 blue. There's your doji over there. You can't even see it because it's the same price. The open and the close, exactly the same. Why is it like that? It's indecision between the bulls and the bears. Okay? So it's in equilibrium, but somebody has to take control. So in this case, we know for a fair amount of certainty that the trend is over and you can go short. You can sell. So we can sell over there. So what do you think is going to happen over here, Oaks? They're your dojis. Doji, 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 doji. What do you think is going to happen? Exactly. How simple? It's not rocket science. Okay. Should we show you another one? Let's go back. Here we go. What's at the bottom? Where is it? What's that? What's that? Doji. At the bottom of the trend. 
So we know it's over. The price is going to go up. Is this simple or is this simple? You just need to know one indicator. Even if you just traded on the doji, you will make money 80% of the time. Just look for the doji. Okay? I'll show you again. Yeah, here we go. Bottom of the trend. Where's your doji? There's your doji. Clink, clink, clink. All the way up. Every single time. The tighter the, the, the doji, the cross, okay, and the bigger the, the, uh, the shadows, the wicks, the more chance it has of reversal, okay? But set your stop losses in a position where you don't get whipsawed too soon out of the market and, the, and it goes up. So you must always know if I'm in this train, in this trade, once you press go, pay, buy, sell, be happy with your decision and have the money rule in place. I'm willing to lose 10% of my money on this trade. Be confident. So don't get out when you're in. You, you've got $1,000 in, okay, and it goes down $20. Be confident with your decision and know that you're going to lose $100. When it reaches $100, okay, you might have a shit decision. Get out. Okay, take your loss. Don't wait more than 10%. And, oh, my God, please reverse. You must go in knowing that you're going to lose 10%. Not I'm going to make 10%. Get your mindset right, okay? Get your emotions under control. And the only way you can get your emotions under control is if you have money rules. So the first rule is doji. Yes? Um, I wanted to ask, where do you put your take profit? You don't. You wait for the doji. You want to get out. So let's look at the chart. So there, so you got, so this is what all the traders, all the amateur traders, okay, they put their profit in, okay, and they say, oh my God, I've made enough money, I'm getting out. But you've lost all this money here. Why would you get out? You haven't seen a doji. There's no doji. There's no reversal signal. You stay in the trade. Okay, so there's your doji over there, okay? There's your doji. And we're going to go all the way up here. What's that? Doji! There's a doji over there. Okay? There's your doji. Yeah. Here's your doji. There. Yes, so it went up a little bit. But then, here it is. Do you see your wicks? Long wick. Long wick. It's telling you. Problems. So if you made it, you will make mistakes here. It's called a false positive, okay? But here's your, here's your reversal over here, okay? It's telling you to get out. If you, if you get back in over there, it's dangerous. When you see a doji at the top, you need to take profit. Unless you understand, okay, what's going to happen with the chart. And you can only know that if you look back in history, Look back in history, you need to look for points of resistance and points of support. So, here is how I analyze it. Resistance, when you jump up and you hit your head on the ceiling, are you having support or resistance? Resistance. When you stand on the floor, are you having support or resistance? Right. Congratulations, rule number two. Okay, is it simple? So, you, I'll be with you now. So you need to look past in the previous history to see, is there going to be support? Is there going to be um, resistance? So you draw a line. You draw horizontal lines, okay? And you can check. That's the highest it is. And there's your doji. There is your doji. There, there, on the right. There's your doji. It's not going to go much higher because we've looked left. How do you read? Right to left or left to right? You see, you Oaks are reading right to left. You're looking at the graph and say, oh, please go, oh, please go. No, Oaks, you need to look in the past, in history. History? 100%. Are you learning? Okay. So there, we know. There's the doji. We're at the top of the trend. The chances of it reversing are about 85%. Get out. Get out. Go short or stay out and wait for the next candle, okay? 
especially in an uptrend. So you can see here, next chart. Yeah, check. So we got the doji at the top of the trend, and we went short. Check what happened. You made all that profit. It's like 100 pips. You're making five. You want 100 or you want five? Okay? This is simple. Forex is? Walala? You see, you are South African. For my white people. You snooze? Right. Okay, so let's go, let's go to the next slide. Okay. So you always analyze from the largest time frame to the smallest time frame. But when you're trading, you trade on one time frame. Okay, and this is where people get confused is because they, you do know they're different time frames, yes? So you've got your, uh, your one day, you've got your, your one month, your one day, you've got your week, your day, your four hour, your one hour. Do you, under, do you know what I'm talking about? Does anybody not know what I'm talking about? Put your hands up. If you do not know, thank you. Here are your time frames on the Here are your time frames on the left hand side. Those are time frames. So each candle is a time frame. So each candle represents a time. So I'm on the H4 chart there. H4. So each candle is four hours. So you need to, especially when you're new. You need to trade on a long time frame because you don't know how to make decisions yet. There's too much information. You had a question that I missed you. I'm sorry. I wanted, on the simplicity of the previous one, a doji on top, chances are going to reverse, get out. The ch chances are it's reversing. Oh, you need to get out. Opposite yes. A doji at the bottom. Just you, you wait. Okay. It is a reversal signal, but you wait. Okay. You wait, and I'll, I'll show you. You wait for a, a, a bullish harami, which I'm going to explain to you. Okay, bullish harami means pregnant woman in Japanese. Okay, so it means uh, this. He has one candle. He has another candle. This candle, okay, is bigger than this candle. So this candle is like the stomach of the lady. Okay, it's called it's, it's a, a harami. So this is the red candle at the bottom of the trend. This is the green candle, which is called the bullish harami. Okay, the next candle that opens must be a green candle above. That's your buy signal. Very simple. Okay, nothing complicated. Okay, so so we need to analyze from over here. Oh man. So your time frames. We trade on a four-hour chart because everything is slowed down for you. And you can think and make decisions and confuse yourself and conforculate yourself properly, okay, with what it's going to do, okay? So you can check the chart. You can think about it. You can go back to you. You can check your resistance and your support levels, and then you can... Um, Make like a decision on what's going to happen because it's in slow motion, okay? But you use your other time frames to see and to correspond with your decision to make sure that it is what it is. So if we, as you can see on this chart over here, I don't know what we're trading, Bitcoin, okay? So we're at the bottom of the trend and they're your dojis at the bottom. So what are we expecting to happen? Huh? Wait for what? We're waiting for the second candle. Okay, we're waiting for the second candle to be a bullish candle. And it must close out bullish. So the second candle of the four hours must close green above the other candle, the, the last green candle. Are you with me? So the next candle closes out here above this candle. Then you know what? Buy. Because it's going up. Stay in until? The next? The next doji. Yeah, we're learning. Okay. So now we're on the H1, H4 candle. Let's see what's happening on the H1 candle. Okay. Confusing. It's very difficult to see 
on the H1, but you can see for the last while, we're traveling sideways. So on the H1, we also, sideways, sideways, there is your bullish candle. So there's your doji, and there's your bullish candle. Okay, so we're starting to get the confirmation that we're in a bullish market already. Okay, so if we go back to the H4, let's go back to the H4, it's going up, it's going down, it's going up, who knows? So we use the other time frame to make a decision of whether it's going up or down. So is it going up or down? It's going up. According to the H1, we're starting to get into a, bull, into a bullish market. So what I would do over here is I would draw a horizontal line over there because that is what? You're correct. So when it breaks that, then you know you're in a bullish market. Okay? Then you can buy and you'll make this whole trend. Okay. Forex does not crash. Everybody has the misconception that Forex, oh, the currency crash. Forex doesn't crash. There's no recession in Forex. Go to the airport. You'll go check if there's a, if there's a recession in Forex. Okay? There's no recession. People are traveling and people are buying Forex all day, every day, forever. Okay? It just corrects. And the banks manipulate it. And the financial institutions manipulate it. Because they need to make money. So they'll push the price down and down and down. And everybody will get... You see, when you make money, somebody loses money. That's Forex. Unfortunately, it is what it is. Okay, so every time you lose, you're making someone rich. So carry on losing. Stop losing. Learn. Are you learning? Okay. So we're going to wait until we hit support. It's got to break that resistance. It's got to break the resistance and it's got to go through resistance over there and it's got to go above this line. Then we know that we have support. The currency has been supported by that line. We're in a bullish market and it's going to go up. Let's look left. There you go. There. So it's been, the, it's been the lowest it's been in days since the 26th of September. Longer. There. Since... The 16th of September, that's the lowest it's been. So what do you think is going to happen in the next couple of hours, Oaks? Correct. I'm not telling you to buy. I'm just teaching you how to read a forex chart, okay? So don't take out your phones and go long on Bitcoin. I don't trade Bitcoin for two reasons. The spread is huge, and um, it's, it's major volatility. Major. And it's, it's no thanks. I said I don't like to trade manually. I don't have the personality to trade manually, Okay, I'm a hell of an excited oak. I'm hell of an emotional, like you didn't know that already. And uh, I just prefer to introduce people, talk, make passive income, okay, and teach people how to make passive income. Do you want to, do you want to trade or you want to make passive income? By the bot. Cool, but let's carry on with the lesson. So let's go on to the next time frame, which is a 30 minutes. So for the last 30 minutes, there's... For the last 30 minutes, okay, each candle is 30 minutes. So that's 30 minutes, that's 30 minutes. So there's your doji, so we don't know, so there's no confirmation here. Only because, okay, we're in a sideways market, so it's very difficult to read this chart. Okay, but let's go into a smaller time frame. Smaller time frame is 15 minutes. So the last 15 minutes, there's your doji over there, false positive, and we're still in an upward trend. So, the, so there's your bullish, there's your bullish, okay, we're almost on support there, which is confirming that you're going to be into a bullish trend. So let's go down to the five-minute chart. So I'm going to have to wait. Okay, there we go. So the last five minutes we've been going up. So there's your, there's your uh, doji, and we're up. And if uh, I'll teach you the moving averages now to enhance what I'm talking about. Okay, it's coming down, but we, we're, we're still going up. Okay, and I'm going to show you why. Are you learning, guys? Okay, so you're trading on one time frame, and you're going to make decisions on one time frame, but you're going to use the other time frames to confirm your decision. Okay, so we're trading on the four-hour chart, so we aren't going nowhere yet. It, there is no buy signal yet. All we have is dojis. The more dojis you have in a row means that the more indecision there is in the marketplace between the bulls and the bears, the buyers and the sellers. Forex works on supply and demand, okay? People buying, people selling, okay? 
So we're waiting. But according to this chart, we've got dojis here at the bottom. My anticipation is, according to history, from the 18th of September, it's been the lowest it's been in a long time. We're into a bull market here, and we'll come back to this chart, and we'll come check it out later on. Okay, cool. Any questions? Yes, no. Questions? Okay, ask. How do you identify a false doji? You, said you're you can't recognize a false doji as you, you will take... What will happen is, is that we taught that a doji at the top means it's a reversal. But you're not going to reverse if it's like you've got no support and resistance. What do you know you at the top? What's the point? You'll look for history. Your history will tell you if at, the, at the top. Okay, so if you're looking at a chart and there's no support or resistance there, it's a false positive. But you need to look. It's, it's, it, it's on your moving averages. You're getting stuck on a moving average on another time frame, which I'm going to show you. Okay. So there's, you must remember that you're trading on a four hour. You've got hundreds of thousands of traders trading on a one hour chart. People trading on the 30 minute, people trading on all different time frames. Okay? So things are happening on different time frames. Not everybody's trading on the four hour. Okay? And there's a reason why you'll get a false positive because if there's an indicator on another time frame, okay, that is telling people, okay, a different story to what you already know on the four hour. So that's why it gets stuck. And I'm going to explain it to you. I know it's like, sounds like, what is this oak talking about? I'm going to show you. Okay, so we've analyzed, okay, your doji. You get, do you understand the doji? You see, can you see how you can take advantage of the doji? Okay, so is that going to enhance your profit and loss? So here's the rule. The doji at the bottom of a trend, take profit, okay? So if you've gone short and you see that it's at the lowest it is because you've looked left, it's going to hit support, okay? And you've got doji, doji, doji. You get out, you keep your profit, okay? Now the thing with, going, with your trend going um, short is that it's fast. It's not fast. Like uh, the, going up is not fast. Going down is quick, okay? Things depreciate fast, and they go fast. They go south fast, okay? That's why when you're at the bottom of the trend and you see, you see a doji, you, don't, you take your profit and you don't go long. You wait. This is critical, okay? And you wait, I'll show you. Let me go to the past, into history. Right, here it is. Okay. There's your doji. We know we're at the bottom of a trend. Okay? But we don't get in. There's your bullish harami. Bigger than this candle. It's an engulfing, it's an engulfing signal, not a harami. It's a, an engulfing candlestick, which means that it's, it's bigger and it engulfs the previous candle. So we already know that we're in a bull market, but we can't confirm it, okay? Because we need to wait for the next candle to close out positive. The next candle needs to close out or open. So you've got your, this candle needs to close positive, uh, sorry, green. And then your next candle needs to open green. When it opens green, you can get in. I would, I would wait and I'll show you. That's that, a lot of traders do that, but you can see that you're already in it. So let's go back. Let's go back a little bit. Yeah. So there's your doji. Here's your doji. You waited. It was red, but then you got your green candle, and you got in over here, and you rode it. Your stop loss is about here, 10%, and you rode it all the way up here. Okay? So let's look in the past. Here we go. Here are your dojis. Here are your dojis. Okay, it's red, green, and you got in over here, and you made your profit all the way up to here. There's your doji, you got out, and you made it all the way back to the bottom. Guys, this is like simple. Can you see, like history repeats itself, and the doji is the king. That's all you need to learn here. Okay, so let's have a look at the next slide. Are you excited knowing what you know? Cool, so now we've analyzed moving averages. Now, when you use moving averages together with your stochastic, 
Let me go back here because I didn't include the stochastic. I'll do, it. I'll do it in my next analysis, okay? Your moving average. Do you know what a moving average is? Who does not know what a moving average is? Okay, great. So the average, it's the average closeout price of the past X candles plotted in a line format. So they take on, uh, so if it's a 20 moving average, it means it is the closeout price of the average closeout price of the past 20 candles, you get a number. So if you add up the closing price of all the past 20 candles, you add them up and you divide by 20, will give you a number, and that number is plotted on a chart, and then you draw a line. Are we, are we together? We did do maths, yes? It's like standard one maths or something, plotting uh, line charts. Together. Anybody not understanding? Put your hand up. I'll explain it again. It's not a biggie. Okay, cool. Okay. So moving averages or lagging indicators when used correctly in conjunction with candlestick analysis, they become predictive indicators with 80 to 90% accuracy. So these are your moving averages that you're going to have on your phone. Okay. You're going to have, uh, okay, so let's go to the phone. Uh, the blue and the gold, the blues are five. The gold is a 10. Okay, the yellow is a 34 moving average, the purple is a 50, the blue is 100, and the red is a 200. So now you've got to learn 15 major candlestick reversals and six moving averages. Can you survive? Okay, so you know how I learned this? I had my piece of paper printed, okay, and I studied. That's what I did. I studied it, and I learned it. That's all that it is. It's not like I was born with an innate ability to do this. Okay? So professional traders, they all make their decisions. Now, a lot of professional traders don't use candlestick analysis. Okay? They use the moving averages to make their decisions. So there's a couple of ways that you can analyze charts you can, or, or base your trades. You can do it on fundamentals or you can do it on technical analysis. Fundamentals means that you read the news and you listen to the news. So have you ever known the news to be right? Okay, is, is the news accurate? Okay, they just, they don't even know what the hell they're speaking about a lot of the time. Okay, I like to use technical analysis. Because most traders are using technical analysis to base their decisions on. So we don't predict the market. We just use the technical analysis that the professional traders are using, okay? And we trade off their trades. It's that simple. Because we know that they're going to do what they're supposed to do when it hits a moving average, okay? So let's check it out. This is crazy stuff, okay? Are you ready to have your mind blown? There is a reason why the chart has stopped, okay, at that price. Why? Because it has hit. It is very close to this moving average. So the resistance, the price is hitting resistance on this candle, which is the 50 moving average. Professional traders trade off the 34, the 50, the 100, and the 200. Usually the 200 and the 50. Those are the banks, financial institutions, because they are long-term traders. They are swing traders. Okay, that, um, so let's move on. So if we go to another chart, let's go to another time frame. What time frame are we on here? H4. Let's see why we have frozen at that level. Okay? Hey Amen. Come on. Okay. So there is nothing over here. Look, we're close to the 200. The red is the 200. So we're hitting a little bit of resistance there. So people are getting... A little bit jittery. So th th us amateurs, we'll put our stop loss over here because we know we're getting close to the 200. So a lot of oaks are getting out of the trade before it hits the 200 because when it hits the 200, the 200 is a major, major reversal point on forex charts, on all charts. You can use candlestick analysis on pharmaceuticals, by the way. And uh, this is why I'm astounded why your trader lost so much money. It's like insane. Okay, he's a professional trader. Like, this is like, why did you lose money? Okay, correct. Okay, do you see how close we are to the 200? 
So people are getting out of this trade. They're taking their profit. They're already bung. Okay, so they've made their profit. They got in here. They made up uh, over the 34, okay, over the 50, and now they're getting close to the 200, and they're scheming, uh -uh, this is, there's going to be a reversal here because either two things are going to happen here. It's going to break the 200 and go north, okay, or it's going to go south. So if the oaks over here think that it's going to go south, and a lot of people do that because they don't know how to read a chart, they say, oh, I'm going to get out because I'm going to hit the 200, and we know that when we hit the 200, it may go south, and if it does go south, what happens when it goes short? Does it go short fast or slow? So you lose your profit. That's why you're getting whipsawed out of the market and you're losing money. Are you getting it? Okay? The stochastic indicator is this indicator at the bottom here. So anything between 0 and 20 means that, the, that the, the pair, the forex pair, is in an oversold position. It means that too many people have sold it and you can expect it to go up. Okay? Between your 80 and your 100, it means that you're in an overbought position, which means that there's too much supply of it. Okay? Too many people have bought it and they, there could possibly be a reversal. There is a formula to work out what the pip value is. So if you've got 14 pips, I'll give you the formula. It's a lengthy formula. You need to do the calculations and say, right, one pip is equals to this on one lot. So if you've got 14 lots, times it by 14. Then you'll know what one pip is. So if it moves one pip, okay, in the wrong direction, that's your risk. You got a question, dude? Okay, one second. Okay, that's your risk. So if you times that by 20 pips, then you know that you can only take 20 pip loss because that's your 10%. So it's 20 pip loss. Put your stop loss in and go to work. Okay? And while you're working, <laughs> more question. Just uh, yesterday, no? um, I actually put my stop loss like maybe 200 pips or something like 200? Mm -hmm. You got balls of steel, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but it. Um, Are you making money? At a micro lot. Like uh, oh, okay. 0 0.01 yeah. like cents, something like cents D. Are you trading on cent accounts or bank accounts? On the cent account. Okay, cool. Mm. So 200, yeah, okay, cool, Karen. Yeah, so now, um, what I, I don't know if this is a, it's a, it's a, it is a good strategy, but like, um, I'd look at the, uh, the last, the least least price, the lowest Okay, let price. me ask you a question. Do you know what one pip movement is in dollars? Um, so every time the pip moves, do you know how much risk you have involved in that trade? I think it depends on, on the, the, what is it? The currency. Uh, not the currency, but the um, lots. What is it, the 0 0.01%? Do you know what, each time the currency moves one pip, mm -hmm. do you know what that is in dollars for you? Yes or I no? Think, uh, I, think it, I think I do know. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do not think anymore? you either know or you don't know. It's like you're pregnant. I don't, I can't, you can't think you're pregnant. You either know you're pregnant or you know you're not pregnant. Yeah, but I think depending on the, on the thing, on the leverage that I'll be using. Depending on the uh, you, That's not good money management. Because if it, if it moves, if it moves 50 pips, okay, you could blow your account. It's more, it could be, that move could be more than 1% or more than 10% of your equity. Are you, are you with me? Are we together? Mm. Have, I, have I answered your question in a roundabout way? Yes, you, you have. Okay, so you can't just place your stop loss and say, I'm going to make it 200, 200 pips or 200, yeah, 200 pips. You need to know the value of the pip and it varies according to the currency. So I'm going to teach you a little trick here. This is the sickest trick I've ever seen in my life. This is the game changer in Forex. Okay? It's called the 8 exponential moving average. And you need to set your phone up accordingly to accommodate this 8 exponential moving average. So it's the exponential on the close. And I've done it in red and white as a dotted line. Okay? So you'll set up your phone accordingly. So the red is the style. So you'll click style, and you'll change it to red. And then where it says levels, you'll change the style to white. And then you'll have the dotted line. So here's the rule. When you go long, okay, that means you're buying, you wait for the candle 
So you're in a short position. So you just come out of the trend from a downward, you're at the bottom of the trend, and you now going want to catch the upward swing. What do we look for? Doji. Okay? Then we wait for the candle to close above the eight exponential moving average. When it closes above the eight exponential moving average, what do we have? A buy signal. Let's go check. Oh my gosh. There it is. Doji. Long wicks. Doji. Long wicks. The longer the wicks, the more powerful the reversal signal, but we're not in the reversal yet. As you can see, it's a slight false positive. We've come down here. There is your bullish, your engulfing candle. There is your bar candle. It closes over here. After the eight exponential, the red and white, okay, you're in the trade. The close of this candle, your next candle to open four hours later. Let me draw. Right. Here, yeah. 8 o'clock in the morning. Where am I looking? Where am I looking? I'm looking there. That's the time frame, 11 of October, 8 o'clock in the morning. So the, we started at 12, okay, 4 o'clock, 8 o'clock. Very simple to work out, okay? So when's the next close? 8 and 4 is? Thank you. Next close, 12 o'clock, okay? So we know we're 12 o'clock at 11.30, Okay, we can look at our phones. You set your alarm and you say, okay, time to open the phone. What are we doing? Is it, did the candle close above the eight exponential? Yes. Buy. It's time to buy. And you stay in until you get a false positive. If you get a false positive, you'll lose a little bit of money. So what did we make here? Let's check. Take it horizontal. So we got in over there. Hey, dude. Okay. So we got in over there. Oh. Sorry, let me draw it. Let me just get it here. And we got out over there. Okay. So we got in. So we got in over there. Okay. So at the top there. Okay. So we made 14 pips. Okay. We got out. We got out, so we made 14 pips on a 14 lot. On a 14 lot. That's bucks. Okay? That's bucks. Then we got back in, and we're up here now. Okay? We're up here now. So we've made another 22. So I'm up 34. I'm up 34 pips on this trade. Did I have I done well? Okay? So now what's going to happen? We know. Okay? The next... Moving average, Oaks, is your Bollinger Bands. They are the white. They are your white. They're in white. So you'll notice that your candle follows these moving averages. It's not a coincidence. There are stop losses. Other traders, the professional traders and other Mickey Mouse traders, they've put their stop orders, their buy orders, their buy limits, their stop limits, okay? They take profits, their stop losses. They've put them on those moving averages. So if I take a picture, we can predict with a fair amount of certainty, okay, what's going to happen with the moving average. Oh, it's not a pen. Looking for my glasses. So let's take this. So what do you think is going to happen with the red? The red is coming down like this, and then it's going to go up there. So where do you think the stop losses, the take profits, and the buy orders are? Within that region. They are there. Here are your stop losses, your buy orders, your blah, blah, and everybody's getting whipsawed out. The same thing with the blue. You can predict it. What's going to happen? It's going to do that. Okay. Are you learning, guys? Okay. So we're getting, but we always know, okay, the further away you get from the eight exponential moving average, we know that it's coming back to the eight exponential moving average. Check. Look. Look how it hugs the eight exponential. It's not fluke. It's not coincidence. Okay. So it goes down. It goes down. It goes up. 
touches on the, on the eight exponential, goes down. The further away it comes, it starts coming back to the eight exponential, touches the eight exponential, goes through the eight exponential, comes back to the eight. It's always coming back to the eight exponential moving average. So what do you think? What, where is this going? Up or down? No. Correct. Correct. Where is it going to? To where? Where is it going to, guys? Where is this candle going to? To the 8 moving, to the 8 EMA. It's going down to there, to this line. But I don't want to get out. Why am I not getting out? No. There's no doji. So I don't care that it comes down. You see, this is where you're freaking out. Okay? It's going down. Yes, it's going down. And you'll probably go into negative. But then the doji hasn't formed. It's just a candle. Okay? Oaks are getting whipsawed out of the market as they're supposed to. The chart is behaving exactly the way it's supposed to. People are doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing, acting and behaving like idiots. Okay? They don't know how to trade. And, they, and we're just taking profit because we know how. So we're staying in. So this is coming down to this eight exponential moving average. It's coming all the way down to here, and then it's going to go all the way up again, and I'm going to make 200 pips on this trade. Oaks are seeing it on my, on, I'm posting it. I'm not secretive. When you're, when you're part of my tribe, okay, I'm, I'm going to teach you. Okay? So this isn't, doesn't end today. Okay, we're going to start there. I've got the Telegram group already, okay? And so this is not a once-off thing. You're going to join the Telegram group. You're going to join my Telegram group. Learn how to read a Forex chart. And my first Zoom call is on Monday at 7 o'clock. So cancel everything that you have so that you're available. Download Zoom onto your phone. It's an app. And join me on the call so that you can continue with this lesson, okay? Because I'm, it sounds complicated. It's a lot of information, okay? But the more you hear it, the more you understand it, the better you'll become, the more proficient you will get at understanding what's going to happen with the Forex chart. And it's the same information over and over and over again. Are you with me? Are, you to, are we together? Are you excited? Just... Define a pip. Uh, it's a price in percentage is what it stands for. A pip is the value of a currency at that point in time. Okay, it's the price. It's basically the price. So if the price goes up by one, by one point. So let me show you. Okay, so let me take a picture. There is the price. The price of this currency... Euro, Jap uh, Euro pound, okay, there's the price, 0 0.87834. Uh, the four is a micro pip. We ignore it. So when the three goes to a four, it means that it's moved one pip. So if 83 becomes 93, it means that the price has moved 10 pips. If the price becomes from 783 to 883, it means we have moved 100 pips. This is on normal currencies. The yen works differently. Let's go to the yen. Was it, was it uh, a good idea for you guys to come today? Good decision. Right, so we are trading. We are looking at Aussie yen. Aussie dollar, Japanese yen. Look, there's only three, not four. The last pip is the micro pip. So when the five becomes a six, that's one pip. When 75 becomes 85, that's one pip. You cannot determine what the pip value is until, sorry, 10 pips. You cannot determine what the pip value is, okay, until you use that calculation. It's not one cent, it's not one dollar, it changes according to the currency that you are trading. Okay? Are we together, Okies? Right. What does the red and white line stand for? Huh? No, not that one. The red and white line. This red and white line, what does it stand for? 
Thank you. Come up for applause. Here we go. Compliments of FPS. Well done. Give him a round of applause. Somebody's learning. Okay. Okay, so that's the eight exponential moving average. So on a bar, so you're at the bottom of a trend, okay, and we want to catch it on the upswing. So we wait. We're waiting for the doji. We're waiting for the second candle, second candle to open above the eight exponential, okay? And we must be in a, the stochastic must be in an oversold position. This thing over here must be between the zero and the 20. Then we know for sure it's a buy signal. Does the graph look so complicated now? Okay. Now you know what everything is. Before it was like, oh my God, so many colors. It's like my child's drawings. Very simple. Okay. So let's have a look here. What's the next one? So now you're at the top of the trend. What do we know? When you're at the top, when it comes down, is it fast or slow? That's why when you see the doji, you take profit. Because when it comes down, it's coming down fast. So take your profit. Two rules in Forex. What are the two rules for a prize? Not my traders. Not my, huh? What did you say? Protect your capital. Make profit. Protect your capital. If you're not protecting your capital, you're going to blow your account. So who's blown their account? Oh, my hands are up. Eh? Four times. Okay. Four times. Then I got mentored. Why? Because I got sick and tired. I've been sick and tired of losing cash. Other people are making cash. They know something I don't. So that is your rule. You need to have your rules, and you need to stick to your rules. This is where the emotion comes. If you have rules, can you be emotional? No. That's why when you're trading, you have your rules. So before you, have, before you trade, you have a checklist. Rule one, doji. Rule two, moving averages. Rule three, support and resistance. Rule four, stochastic. Tick, 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 tick. Emotionless, buy, sell, stick to your guns, take the loss, okay, know that you're going to lose 10%, but with a fair amount of certainty, knowing what you know today, are you a ninja? Yes. A lot of people don't understand passive income and they think passive income is fictitious. Passive income is real. If you're making passive income, please stand up. Every single person standing are my clients. Every single person except for one. Oh, but you, okay, how's it? How are you? Black, I didn't see you there. So this is Paul from Pips Empire. I met Paul in Singapore. We were both flown over, all expenses paid by FPS to receive an award for being a top RB in the country, okay, for introducing people and uh, helping to grow um, FPS in South Africa. So Paul's a legend. He understands. Are oh, you learning, Paulie? Okay, cool. So Paul's got a different strategy. Paul's got, a, uh, he, he trades off the, off the hammer, which is also a big reversal pattern. I just don't use it. We all have different strategies, okay? So I didn't even know you were here. You didn't even, you were hiding, man. <laughs> so the, uh, if you want to make true passive income, okay? Now, a lot of you can't afford the $97. A lot of you can't even afford to, like, trade, and you're trading with $100. And my advice to you is, is to save. You need to save 10% of your money and stop messing around with the cigarettes, with the cappuccinos, with the uh, magazines, with movies, okay, with jawling. Okay, you need to stop. And I know it's tough. It's a tough choice. It's small gain for, for small pain 
for long-term gain. Because if you don't formulate that habit now, you will be poor and you will carry on being poor and nothing is going to change in your life. Okay? You need to save your money. Now, I don't advise this. It is not investment advice. But it's funny how we know for a fact it's proven that 98, 90, 80 to 90% of businesses fail in the first five years. Do we know this? Right. In the next 10 years, 90% of the companies that survived the first five years are going to fail. So when you go into business, you have about a 1% to 2% chance of surviving for 10 years. Okay? Now, when you go into business, you are taught to borrow money. Yes? You borrow money, you go and invest in your company, you lose money for three years, maybe longer, and uh, you have this false sense of, uh, of profit because you're looking at your bank account and not at your cash flow statement and your income statement because you're in vanity mode. And you, you, you see, vanity is looking at your bank statement, okay? okay? Reality is looking at the cash flow. Sanity is looking at your profit, Okay? That's when you know you're sane, when you're making profit, not when it's red, 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 red. Okay? And it's funny how you never borrow money to invest. Why? Because the money that you're going to get from the investment is less than the profit that you're going to get from that investment. So it doesn't make financial sense. Yes? So you're going to earn, you're going to be raped by the bank. I don't know, what's... Uh, what do they charge you when you borrow money? Is it a month, a year? I don't know what it is. How much is it? A month, a year. Okay, so you're going to be charged between 9 and 15% a year, prime plus 2, prime plus 3. So 15%. So you're going to borrow money at about between 1 and 3% a month. Yes? between 1% and 3% per month. You're going to buy, that's what they're going to charge you. I'm giving you an opportunity where you're going to make between 14% and 26% per month. And you're thinking about it. Like if I, knew this, if I knew this information, I would go and borrow the freaking money. Borrow 15 grand, okay? Buy the bot, start printing money, okay? If you want to trade manually, Learn on demo while you're printing money. This is a called a learn while you earn strategy. Okay, so while my bot is printing you cash, you can go and mess around on demo, be on my Telegram group, get the mentorship, and I promise you even then when, you, when you're taught, you won't even trade. Why? Because passive income is addictive. It's addictive. We wake up at 4 o'clock. How much passive income have I made? While I was sleeping. Doing nothing, that's your biggest risk. Okay, carry on doing nothing. Procrastinate. Carry on procrastinating, Oaks. Okay, procrastinate. Do nothing. Especially you PhDs. You educated folks that PhD, yeah, we talk. We like dialogue. We talk. It's procrastination. Me, I do things at speed. That's what entrepreneurial spirit is. You see something, you get in. When somebody offers you an amazing opportunity, just say yes and figure it out on the way. This is an amazing opportunity, okay? And it's legitimate. It's real. It's legitimate. The bot works, okay? It's freaking awesome. And you make money every single day. <laughs> every single day, I'm going to show you. Not one day has my bot lost money. Not one day. Let's show it to you. Go find another bot that can do that to you. When you find it, please bring it to me. Go and look at the chart. Every dot is higher than the previous dot before it. That means every day it made profit. The red dots, forget about the yellow. Okay? Every red dot is higher than the dot before. It makes profit every day. The only reason we lost money over there is because I traded manually. I closed some trades, and I did some manual trades. So I wanted to show you guys, 
okay, trading manually versus the bot. And when you trade manually, you have what? Emotion. Emotion gets in your way, and you make mistakes, especially you, Oaks. Is there anybody here that's trading that has made money? Why? Because we are emotional beings. We're not beings of reason. We're emotion. We are driven by emotion. We make our decisions based on emotion. So keep the emotion out of it. Either learn to trade using my signal, my, my, my moving averages and my tools that I've given you, or buy the bot and go on holiday and make passive income and retire at 25. That's if I saw this at 25. Where would I be? Holy cow. Right, so those are your time frames. So you trade, so we know that we trade, okay, on the biggest time frame. We trade on a four hour chart and we base our decisions on the other time frames, okay, so that we can confirm our decision. That's why you trade on the four hour because it's time slowed down. You've got four hours to make a decision to live in your head. Okay, and go onto the group and ask questions and say, is it a buy signal? Where should I put my stop loss? But I'm not going to answer those questions. I'm not going to give you trading advice. I'm only going to tell you how to read a Forex chart. Don't ask me for a signal. Don't ask me where I need to put my stop loss. That's your decision. It's your money. It's your risk profile, and everybody's risk profile is different. It's not for me to say to you, you need to lose this much money. Average, if you speak to any investment dude, they're going to tell you maximum loss is 10%, maximum, okay? And you should have stop losses in, in that that are going to prevent that. So we have a trailing stop loss. So when your thing goes up, you put your stop loss in. I'm not trading with a stop loss because I don't want to be whipsawed out of my trade because I know that it's freaking, this thing is going north. And I'm going to show you, let me show you, let me get that thing up for you and I'm going to show you how much loot we're going to make here. So we know, okay, from experience, there it was, there's the high, there's the high and there's the high, okay? So we've got resistance and support over here at this level. Do you agree with me? Do you understand that or must I draw a line for you? Do you want me to draw the line hands up? Right. Okay. Okay, so we're going to put the resistance over here. So there it is. There's your high over there. We're going to turn the chart sideways, and we're going to zoom in. And you can see that the currency stops at certain levels. Okay, so where's it stopped? It's planing. It's planing over here. Where's my line? There. So it's planing over here. So there's lots of places where it stopped and it went up, came down, went up, came down to the line. So that line seems to be like a point of, like a place where it's playing over here as well. So that line, okay, so we can know for a certainty that it's going to stop at that line, okay? We know that. History's telling us. So how much money am I going to make? How many pips am I going to make? So I'm going to take a horizontal line and I'm going to draw a line from there to there. If you look at the top, you can't really see it. Oh, you can. Look at the top. Top of the screen, left. Okay? Trend line 43 slash 1339. Those are your pips. So I'm going to make from here, where did I get in? I got in over there. I'm going to make 141 pips at 14 lots. Holy cow. That's what I'm going to make on this trend. 141 pips. You oaks are making five. In fact, you're not making, you're losing. Okay? So that's now that I can trade with a certain amount of confidence because I have my rules in place. So if you have your rules, can you go wrong? No. So you're trading on one time frame only, check other time frames to confirm, check other time frames to see why the currency has stalled, and you'll see that the currency has stalled because of another moving average. So you'll see that the currency is like fluctuating because it's hitting, okay, it's hitting like the 50 or it's hitting the 34, okay? Now it stops there because other people have got their orders there, their stop losses, they take profits, they've got their... Uh, uh, buy limits, buy, sell, or sell limits, and the market doesn't know what to do until either the bulls win or the bears win. 
So either there are more selling orders than buying orders, which means the currency is going to go down, or there are more buying orders than selling orders, and the currency is going to go up. It's just people. More orders for buying or more orders for selling. Simple. So when it gets stuck there, you now know why it's stuck. It's just people getting whipsawed out of the market because they don't know what the hell they're doing or they're taking profit or they're taking a loss. Okay, when that's over, the currency will then, somebody will win, okay, and the currency will carry on doing what it's supposed to be doing. Or it's going to come back to the eight exponential moving average. Once it hits the eight exponential moving average, if it's not on a resistance support or uh, um, a major moving average, it's going in the direction it's supposed to go again. This is not hard. If you want to make passive income, buy the bot. Okay? Or do nothing. And nothing will change for you. Okay? You need equity to trade. You cannot trade with $10. You cannot trade with $50. You cannot trade with $100. Okay? Even with $100 on 0.01 lot size on a cent account, it's not enough money for you to trade. You need more equity. And also, when you've got $100 in, you've got no skin in the game. What's the minimum? The minimum is $10. Well, what's $10? To trade, that's the minimum. Put $10 in. But the problem is, is that you've got no skin in the game. You're going to get out too soon. You're going you're gonna to take, when you take a loss, you're like, oh my God, I've lost eight. I've lost $2 out of my eight. I've lost 20 What? Guys, get into the game. Now that you know and you're educated, okay? The reason you're not putting bucks in, two reasons. One, you don't have it. Two, you spork that you're going to lose it. Those are your reasons. Okay? If you don't have it, borrow it. Okay? But before you borrow it, learn to trade on demo so that you can get comfortable. But you need to get over demo quickly. Because when you trade on demo, okay, you're emotionless. And it's not real because it's fictitious money. So you, could, you, you, you act stupidly. You don't act the same as you would okay, when you trade with a live account. Question. Yes. After I have bought the bots now, Plus, minus a day, how much percentage is it making? Nobody can tell you that. It's impossible to predict that. It's Forex. Uh -huh. Okay, so anybody that says to you, now you get, you're guaranteed 1 or 2%, mm -hmm. you are definitely entering a hype, a <coughs> pyramid, and a scam. Mm -hmm. What I can say to you is, you're going to make between 0.01% to about 3% per day maximum, okay? And, sorry? That's the average that they want it. The average is about between half a percent and 0.8. No, I think yeah, that's like the average. But I can't tell you that you're going to do that every day. It's Forex. Forex is unpredictable. It fluctuates. It depends on the volatility. Like when there's an, an NL, NFP, when there's an NFP, okay, we make tons of loot. Okay? 24-7, five days a week. 24-5. Doesn't work on weekends. Market closes on weekend. The only thing that trades on a weekend is crypto, but my bot isn't uh, programmed for crypto. It's too volatile. It's not predictive enough. But being born poor, not your fault. Dying poor, 100% all on you, dude. You need to spend money to make money. Bottom line. Okay? If you want a helping hand, look at the end of your wrist. No one's coming to rescue you or save you. Save yourself. Go borrow the money. Go buy the bot. Stop making passive income. Finished. But you need to make a change in your life. Otherwise, walala. It's time to make a change. And it's time to start making passive income. Alan, so I'll share the passive income guru. And I've just finished a one-day Forex seminar with about 80 people in Johannesburg, South Africa. I think it went amazingly. I think everybody learned a lot. So, did you learn a lot, guys? Yes. Are you excited? Yes. Are you, are you Forex ninjas? Yes. Are you going to stop losing money? Yes. Are you going to start making money? Yes. Good luck. <laughs> there we go. Who's excited? Did you like what you heard? Yes. Are you excited? Yes. 
Have we done? Have we? Have I done justice today? Yes. Are you going to trade with confidence? Yes. Excellent. <laughs>